This is the Nerdy Sports Fan with your weekly Thursday night football post-game analysis. Well, if you watch through that whole game, you're either me or asleep on the couch. Um, yeah, it was a bad one for Raiders fans. Um, for 49ers fans, I mean, hooray, you got your second win on the season. Um, you're not going to get the first overall pick anymore. That's, you know, essentially going to be John Gruden's. But, um, yeah, there's life. So, raise your hand if you knew who Mullins was before the game. Because I sure as heck didn't. But it, it looks like they found an option at quarterback that they can work with, at least, in San Francisco. So, it, it won't be great. I mean, he's still young. He's a, you know, first-year player in that system. I mean, he's been in the system for a couple of years, but this is his first starting action. So, I wouldn't expect him to be a world-beater, folks, but it looks like he throws a good ball. He seems to know the offense. It doesn't look like he was running a limited offense. So, yeah, there might be some life in San Francisco. So, that changes things for fantasy football players, for sure. Uh, all of a sudden, George Kittle goes from, a, you know, an okay tight end play to a lights-out tight end play. Um, the receiving options, they, they got the ball spread around to them pretty evenly through the game. Uh, but, man, Kittle looked fantastic today. So, yeah, that, that was a very, very good shining bright spot for them. Uh, their running back situation got a little murkier with uh, Mossert going down with that arm injury. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's still problems in Fr San Francisco. I'm not expecting them to get out of the top five in draft order here. But with Mullins at the helm, they certainly looked a lot better offensively than they did previously with uh, Bethel. Uh, my best play of this game from San Francisco... Uh, was from uh, McGlinchey, their offensive lineman. If you watch that play where he's running 50 yards downfield to lead uh, an outside run uh, just for a touchdown, it was fantastic to see an offensive lineman go 50 yards downfield and get into the end zone before the back did. I mean, that that's talent, that's athleticism on the offensive line that you don't see from many others at all. And that's a, that's a great player to have on your team if he's going to be willing to dig it out as a 1-7 team, 300-pound man running 50 yards downfield to make a play. So they got themselves a good one there. On the Oakland side of things, the most interesting part of the game was to see John Gruden's reactions to how terrible his team is. And by that, essentially, his non-reactions. He pretty much has a permanent grimace on his face. Even in the past, when his teams have done really well, he always looked angry at them. And that really didn't change at all in this game. He just looked continually angry. He yelled at his defensive coordinator a few times. And I don't understand why his defensive coordinator is getting all the, the grief there on the sideline. I mean, the offense only scored three points there, John. And... Uh, you're the architect of the team now. You got rid of your best defensive player. You got rid of a two-time Pro Bowl wide receiver. There's been not really anything going on to build the offensive line. I understand it's year one of his 10-year contract where he's got all sorts of control. And the real aim is for next season and the season after, and the off season to build this team in his image. So... He wasn't intending on being good this year. Don't expect that, Raiders fans. He's probably going to fire the defensive coordinator. He's probably going to find a quarterback that he actually likes in one of the next two drafts. They need to rebuild the offensive line, very obviously. The current lineup of five guys in front of Derek Carr is going to get the guy killed by the end of the season. So... Um, yeah, they've got a lot of work to do there in Oakland. It's very obvious when a team that won one game beats you by 31 points. So they're in 
rarefied air there. It's pretty much them and the Cardinals going for who's the worst team in the league. I mean, you have two two-win teams that look pretty awful in Buffalo and San Francisco, and somehow they are head and shoulders above two other teams. How, how bad do you have to be? But that's what Oakland's going to be this season, probably next season too. They're, they're a long-term rebuild because John Gruden has a lot of guarantees, and he's going to want to do it right for his system. So everybody's going to be hand-picked come next season and the season after, and it'll be a very different team once everything's rolling in Vegas. Um, so we'll see. I, I still have a little bit of hope. I remember what John Gruden's teams looked like back when he was coaching in his first run in Oakland and uh, his later Super Bowl run in Tampa Bay. They looked disciplined. The current team does not. It looks like he's lost the locker room. But I don't think he cares. I think he believes most of that locker room's not going to be there in one or two more seasons. So it's going to be like this the rest of the way. I'm sorry, Oakland fans. 49ers fans, looks like you got yourself a quarterback that's at least going to be fun to watch this season if he wasn't the quarterback you were expecting at the beginning of the year. But, um, yeah, that'll be interesting to see uh, Shanahan's offense actually being utilized to the full extent. Um, seems that, you know, Mullins has a, a better grasp on it than Bethel did. So that'll be interesting. So this is it for the Nerdy Sports Fan. It was a really bad game. I'm sorry there wasn't more to talk about here outside of how terrible Oakland is. Uh, but we kind of knew that going into it, folks. Uh, follow me on Instagram at the Nerdy Sports Fan. Get my uh, Fantasy Football Pick of the Week. And check out my other videos where I do a pregame analysis of each game with fantasy football implications. Like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. We will see you next week.